of a deal what I thought before. I thought, oh my God, they will cut my belly out open. They will cut everything open. Cha -cha 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 -cha. This is what they will do to me, but it is not the case. I don't feel really good. I think I stay one day, but it was a lie. Yeah, you kind of pretended. <laughs> and this big belly, in my thought, I said, maybe I'm pregnant and 24 babies are inside. Hello, welcome to All About Health where everything is healthy. We have a special guest today. Of course, you can see it here. Uh, it's Queen Natalie. Yay! Hello! Queen Natalie Makoma. So she came back after a year, right? Yes. Okay, she came back to Turkey after a year, after her surgery, gastric sleeve surgery. So as we can see, and you guys can see, she has changed a lot. I mean, a lot. She, how many kilos have you lost? I was... 115.4 kilo okay and now i weigh 64 kilo 64 oh my god yes. that's that's incredible that's amazing mm -hmm. so did you weigh yourself today again yes i was weighed by the dietitian by, oh, the, by the yeah. dietitian. that's great okay so now i mean she's 64 now let's start with your journey when was the time you made the decision to you know come to turkey and do your uh, gastric sleeve well one year ago i contacted health and beauty travel yeah and and uh, I was so desperate to look for a solution for my weight. I thought about liposuction first, but Sema told me the gastric sleeve was better for me. And that is where I went for it. Oh. I came on the 12th of August, 12th of 2020, 2020, and I got my surgery that day. And I was 115.4. And so after the surgery, what did you do? Like right after, did you slept? Did you walk? Did you drink, dance or anything? Cause we've seen the videos, but yes. we really don't understand the process. Like right after the surgery, you started walking or dancing. Is that how it went? Well, the doctor, I remember I told, I asked the doctor, how many times do I have to walk? Is there mm -hmm. any speed? Is there any way of walking mm -hmm. to get the gas out? Mm -hmm. And the doctor told me, the faster you, you walk, the mm -hmm. better. Yeah, yeah. And that is what I kept in my mind. And I asked him why. And he said, then you will get the gas out and your body will get used to the energy because very soon you have to be independent okay so it's better starting your independency now, now okay. so i started walking and until i went home okay. i continued walking and then on my third month i started my zumba all right so you say that you started walking as you followed the doctor hassan uh, suggestion but yes was it right after the surgery or a few hours or one day after well, after the surgery, you will get a rest like four hours. You will be wow. in sleep like a dead person. <laughs> but then after that four hours, they wow. will wake you up uh -huh. and you have to start walking. So the process is so important yeah. to start walking so that the healing process goes fast and smooth. And that shows how less of a big impact the surgery is. The surgery is not dangerous. Okay. It's just a good surgery. For that, you can just walk after four hours so that means it is not that big of a deal what i thought before i thought oh my god they will cut my belly out open they will cut everything open cha -cha 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 -cha. this is what they will do to me but it is not the case so you came for seven days in total? Yes, I stayed for seven days. Okay, uh, but then how long did you stay at the hospital? I stayed uh, four, days. four days. Actually, I could have go home. No, I stayed like five, I think, because I remember I stayed one day more. Because why? Oh, the nurses, everyone was so nice. Yeah. And I was thinking about going alone, being alone in a hotel. I better stay here. So they said, you can go home. Or you can stay unless you don't feel good. I don't feel really good. I think I stay one day, but it was a lie. Yeah, you kind of pretended. <laughs> Sorry, secret is out. It was a lie. I was feeling better, but I wanted just to stay and stick around with everyone. Yeah, that's great. And then two days after you went back home. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, after you finished here, eventually you did your exams before leaving, yeah. uh, but did you do some exams I mean, before the, the, the operation. Before the operation, they did everything like checking my heart, checking okay. my organs, checking my, my sleeve and everything they did. And that is what I was scared of because I had such a big belly, very, very big belly. And this big belly, in my thought, I said, maybe I'm pregnant and 24 babies are inside. And that was my nightmare. 
the day before my surgery. I had a nightmare. They, they did the, the check and then the doctor said, oh my God, so many babies. One, <laughs> two, three, 24 babies because my belly was so big, was so big. and my breast was so big. So no, everything was fine, but my health wasn't in risk. So the dietitian told me, it's good that you came because it was just one step, two step, you could have a heart attack and died. Yeah. And then I left my children and I will never find out that I have 24 babies in my belly. Mm. And I will never find out how I became today. I will die. That all because of the price of eating too much Burger King. Then right after, so you finished, you went back home and you started eventually, you know, going on with your life, like continuing living your life. But I guess, I mean, after such a big surgery, eventually your life will change, right? So then how could you define or describe that change in your life right after like your surgery? The change was different. The first thing that I noticed, I was in airport. My day of flying back to home, I saw McDonald's right in front of my face. And the way I know myself, just the smell, I will not even look on the flight. I will even miss the flight just to get a Big Mac. But what have I done? I saw McDonald's. Oh, good to see you. Hello, McDonald's. I went and searched for my flight. Yeah. That was already a first big change and impact in my life. I was only before thinking nothing else than food. But now for the first time, I was focusing on my flight and not on my belly. And that was one. And second, I was home. I saw the fridge. I saw everything was in there, didn't attract me at all. So I was so focused on taking care of myself, thinking and measuring and watching what I'm doing. And before it was never like that. How was the physical change and the mental change? Because I guess it's, it's, it's also a mental, you know, healing, right? Definitely, because when I, you know, when the, the driver from the hospital leaves you, he said, bye, mm. have a good flight. Yeah. That is the beginning of you walking on your own. And I had that problem before. I couldn't walk. I had pain everywhere. And I didn't even notice that I was just going with my with my case. No pain, mm -hmm. no pain, no pain in the back, mm -hmm. no standing and <sighs> taking breath, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. And then when I was home, my husband said, you have to go pick up the kids. I forgot to say, hey, can you bring me? Because I cannot walk, it's too, it's pain. I went and I came at school. I was standing there, I said, huh? I don't have pain, my pain <laughs> is gone. Yeah. I just had my surgery yesterday, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the pain is so quick, gone. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand how that goes. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Mm -hmm. It's something really, until this day, I don't understand how you have your surgery and tomorrow you get like four kilo off and the pain is gone and it's really a miracle. Do you feel more beautiful, more healthy, and now you can just go around and just feel like I'm free now and I'm, I'm better now. I, I love myself more now. I love myself definitely more. And uh, I'm in love in myself. For me now in a mirror, no one can stand in my way and tell me you are more beautiful than me because I'm beautiful for the whole entire planet. <laughs> That's my face yeah. that you see there. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. It's fantastic. So besides Zumba, which was your physical activity, and it's still to this day, right? Zumba activity. Exactly. So during the whole year process, I mean, up to now, let's speak about the, the eating part because you still have to eat. <laughs> of yes. course, you cannot starve yourself. But what exactly do you follow as a, you know, a, like a diet process, a diet, like some, I don't know, suggestion that you may have, or what do you eat on a daily basis? you know, daily basis. The program that I follow is high protein. I'm really high protein. Since the beginning, they recommend us to do the high protein to uh, preserve the muscles and lose the fat. And for me, I noticed that high protein keep me full for long and energetic. And I am an energy person. I move a lot. So I need something who will maintain my body. High protein is the best. And until this day, I stay there. I don't eat carbs, only through vegetables. So you eat vegetables? But do you eat meat and... I eat more meat because they uh, advise us when we have the vegetables and the meat, the protein on our plate, we have to start the protein first and then eat the vegetable. I almost eat the meat and not really the vegetables. So you always talk about your nutrition. So 
is that so after the, the surgery, then you have a follow-up, right? For you how have, long did you have the follow-up? It's unlimited. It depends on you. I see most, some that thinks, okay, I'm, I have all the tools. Now I'm getting out. So then you see left. But uh, I see also a lot that are like two years post-op. They are still in the group. That, that is very beautiful on the um, clinic HE. They don't kick you out, you know, you yeah. can go by yourself. Yeah. Even how many post-op you are, if you still have questions, you can still ask and they will always answer you. Until this day, I still have questions. Mm -hmm. We keep learning things, we keep finding things out. And I always ask, I do the picture of the food value. Yeah, you send them. And I send them. and she will check and she will tell you, no, this is not safe or this is safe or this is 50-50. If I hear 50-50, Bye bye. <laughs> I don't eat because I always want to eat something which I don't have guilt. And that is what I do. So let's say Queen Natalie Makuma on a daily, you know, period. What exactly do you eat? What I exactly eat is for if I wake up, the first thing I put in my mouth is water. Water is very good for uh, your speeding your metabolism. And uh, of course, we have to take still the pill of the sleeve. So that is also what I take. I most wake up at seven for the children, bring them to school. So I drink my water 30 minutes. At 7.30, I stop drinking because at eight, I will have my first breakfast. 30 minutes after, the liquid for the separation of the solid. So at eight, I make protein powder, vanilla flavor or strawberry or chocolate, doesn't matter what flavor. I mix it with the egg and I make pancakes. So then I have a protein pancakes. So you normally eat like you have breakfast, lunch and then dinner. I eat, no, I don't eat like that because that will be, is impossible for a sleever. Okay. We have too, too little to eat that little. If we eat like three, you will fall. I will fall definitely. So what I do, each meal is like two person meal. So the half of the meal is my meal. So I eat that twice. So I eat seven times. A day. I ate okay. 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock is actually the last. Mm -hmm. But I put additional 8 o'clock if I have shows, I performing. After performing, you have hunger, you are hungry. Mm -hmm is then seven times a day. And all of that is within the thousand calorie under. I end up always like 950, 905 calorie in a day. Okay, is that what you're drinking maybe? This like is protein? now kefir. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a it's coffee. Kef kefir. Kefir. Huh, kefir. Kefir okay. with, with the protein powder. It's like a liquid yogurt, right? Yeah, liquid yogurt from here, from Turkey. From Turkey it's yeah, so yeah. nice. Yeah, I, I love saw that. you drinking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I, I said to myself, it's never in my best. life, but I, then I, I said, let me try. Yeah. And uh, I'm drinking for lactose free. So that also, I drink milk lactose free. Okay. I never right. left. I mix it with the uh, protein powder of uh, cookies and cream and cookies. Oh, great. I'm drinking now. <laughs> So we would like to know, I mean, I'm very curious about that. After the surgery, eventually you went back to your life, but differently this time. And this is another way of living. Your lifestyle has changed. Mm -hmm. But um, how did your family, you know, receive? How did the family, you know, how did they take that? And how did they see that and receive that? Well, in the beginning, it was not easy. Everyone was criticizing me. Everyone. One of a friend of mine, she even told me, you will die. So it will go bad. I have two friends who died, blah, blah. But that was all a lie. She just told me that to scare me off. It is about you. And I said, it is about me. I will do what is good for me. And today, the same people who told me I will die, the same people are saying, uh, what was the name of the clinic again? <laughs> Right. Uh, why are you asking? Uh -huh. No, just a friend is asking. No, the husband. No, it's about you. Why are you lying? You have to tell her that you want to go. Okay, it's about me. I want to go as well because you lost weight. I also want to lose weight. But the same person said, oh no, you don't need to go. Yeah. That's bad. That's a way easy way out. All these things. And even my fans, they were saying, oh my God, Natalie, are you crazy? Why are you doing this? Why can you not do it on your own? It is mental. I was not strong enough. I wish I was strong. I wish I could do it by myself. I wish I could stand up and lose this weight by myself, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So I needed help and I got the help. I got the tools and I don't have any attention to go back where I came from because this is the best version 
of me. So let's keep it. Don't go back to the old version of you in order for you to keep going and be the better version of you. So lastly, uh, to other people like you, or I mean, like you used to be before, uh, to those people who think about you know having the sleeve gastric, what advice would you give them? I will say it is about you, yeah. not about someone else. You are the one who is looking in the mirror. You are seeing what you're seeing in the mirror. You are the one who's going in the shops and trying clothes and is not fitting in. You are the one going and fit and then <laughs> husband start to run. I have destroyed the dress. Okay, leave the dress there and get out quietly. Do you want to live like that? No. So if you see you don't like that, you don't like what you see, you don't like what you're living in and your health starting to become a problem, you should take a good, good decision. And gastric sleeve is really, really helping. And it's not only the surgery, they're not like doing the surgery and leaving you, okay, bye-bye, good luck, but they're helping us support system. That is the number one most important thing. It's not even, you do the surgery, okay, but your mental, if your mental is still thinking, I'm a big girl, you will not change at all. You will not, you will go back to your old ways very fast. You need to understand your life has changed. You need to make your mind understand this old life, I'm not going to do it again. Our biggest enemy is not our belly, but it is our brain. And that is the good and the beauty of clinic obesitas because they have this, aftercare support and this aftercare is helping us mentally to be ready for the new life so my advice is yes do the gastric sleeve your life will change thank you very much for all these advices and for explaining again about your journey we learned a lot today and i'm pretty sure you know our followers and viewers out there i think they've learned a lot we keep wishing you the best you know because only the best is happening to you so again thank you and we are always happy to have you here in turkey and you know at dr he uh, hospital clinic so yeah thank you very much thank you very much bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>